Professor Jean-Yves Bazio from the yes. Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, <laughs> if I pronounce it well, and a <laughs> member and, and the president of the Brazilian Academy of Philosophy, and and a person uh, because of uh, we, we are here um, today. So Jean-Yves uh, will have a talk with a very uh, very very fascinating title, The Logic of Paradise. Jean-Yves, the floor is Thank yours. Thank you very much, Martin. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Let uh, me share the screen, uh, how to do that, uh, uh, because I don't know this program. So I, I click on share the screen, and then uh, what I have to do to show the uh, slides. When you click share the screen, there should be uh, a window where you choose uh, which sharing. window, or, or or maybe the whole uh, the whole screen, if you have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, ah, this okay. is the best because it will work work for sure. Is it working now? Uh, we are waiting, but okay, something's yes, we have it. Okay, so please go on. Very good. So um, the title of my talk, as you were saying, is uh, "Logic of Paradise," uh, a topic uh, um, like very much uh, I'm working on. Uh, by the way, I intend to present uh, to organize a workshop on the paradise for uh, for the, on this topic, logic of paradise, for the next uh, congress in uh, Varanasi. I'm working on that. So uh, paradise, it's a name, you know, it's a word, of course, and uh, there are different uh, <clears throat> different synonymous names, if we if we, if we may say. Uh, let's just uh, present two uh, two of them. Uh, even, which is in English, in, Eng in English, it's more uh, people uh, use more even than paradise. But uh, in, <clears throat> in French, we are using uh, paradise, paradis, paradis, paradise, and also the garden of even. There is here uh, you can read this uh, etymology of paradise, mm -hmm. which uh, is uh, in fact from French and from Latin. And it's uh, connected to the idea, uh, and that's why uh, it's interesting to use this word because that's uh, I will I will uh, focus on this meaning of the word. It's a park, so it's a location, a place, as you can see here. That's the important thing, and uh, the etymology is interesting. You know, you have also some word from other language. It's connected also some uh, to some words from other uh, language. Okay, but uh, we don't want to speak only about a word, of course. We don't want to speak about uh, the meaning of the word, but not what, what does it mean to speak about the meaning of the word? Um, I am uh, very much interested in semiotics, so uh, uh, I've been developing a fear about that. And uh, what I have put forward is, a no is, uh, is um, the notion. Uh, what is the notion? I will explain. The notion of paradise. So the notion of paradise is something that gathered together three things. The word, paradise, the idea of paradise, what we think about it, the, the, our thinking about paradise, and the reality of paradise, if there is such kind of reality. you know. So three things. So this is a theory I've been uh, developing, uh, which I, I use the expression pyramid of meaning to talk about this uh, theory because <coughs> We have at the bottom a triangle with idea, thing, and word, and then at the at the top we have the notion which put together these three aspects. So the notion is these three aspects together, and I think the, the pyramid it's a nice representation of that because the notion is at the top it's a general vision of all these three aspects. I will not speak too much about that because uh, it's not the main topic of my talk today. But I wrote a paper about that uh, which was published. Two years ago, uh, three years ago now. Just uh, um, let me explain because I will use this theory to to develop my uh, to develop my uh, logic of paradise. So we have, uh, for for example, we have the triangle of the sun. So we have the sun itself, yeah, and uh, which is here, the sun itself, which is here on the right and the bottom right. We have the word sun, which is here at the top. And then we have a representation of the sun, which is here on the left bottom. Another example is a giraffe. 
So we have the word giraffe. We have the real giraffe that you can meet somewhere in Africa or in a zoo near your house, you know, near your place. And then you have a representation of giraffe, which can be a picture or which can be a definition in the language, in a specific language. Still a third example is a triangle of human beings. So we have human beings, um, which are here represented by one of uh, one specimen, which you can see on the right. On the, on the bottom right, we have the, the, the word expression humans, human beings, and we have the idea of human beings, which are rational animals. I took this example, rational animals, I took this example, logical animals, because today is a world logic day, so it's the day of uh, rational animals. As I was explaining when I was promoting the world logic day, I conceive the world logic day as a celebra celebration of humanity because uh, logic is what characterizes uh, human beings by difference to other animals. So here's the pyramid, and now we will use this pyramid to understand what is uh, what is paradise. So uh, triangle of paradise, you can see here, triangle of paradise. We have the word paradise at the top. On the bottom left, what do we have? Uh, we have the representation of paradise. So representation of paradise, here it's a picture, uh, you know, the paradise has been, uh, there are many different kind of painting, famous painting about paradise, this is one of them. It's kind of representation of paradise. So it's uh, how the way, how we think paradise, but thinking not limited to uh, abstract thinking. It's also, it can be some expression of thinking uh, by painting, which is also part of how the way that we are uh, thinking the paradise. And then the difficult point is that what do we have here on the, on the right, on the bottom right, the reality of paradise. What is this reality of paradise? That's an interesting question. And how we will explain, uh, how, how, how can we reach this uh, reality of paradise? And uh, we will use, uh, my, the title of my talk is The Logic of Paradise. So we can use, uh, as I will explain, we can use logic to go in the direction of the of the reality of paradise, not only uh, about the thinking of paradise, because I think logic is not limited to to thought. I mean, that's important to to stress this point. Logic can help us to access some reality, different aspect of realities, and the reality of paradise. So. Um, the first point, the first point is that uh, paradise, it's um, in the different religion, it's uh, considered because it's not limited to one religion. We get, we, fi we find the idea of paradise in uh, different religions. Uh, even it's quite famous because of the Bible, because there's a garden of, of Eden. But it's uh, it's this idea is also in uh, so in, in Christianity, in uh, in uh, Jewish religion, and also in Islamic religion, and also in other uh, other religions. Then, um, so its a location, it's not a state of mind, as uh, which will be something more like. A, um, the, the, in Buddhism, uh, uh, there is the idea of nirvana, which is a state of mind, not location. So th that's an important difference. But, uh, you know, uh, the, the opposite of, uh, of paradise, it's also a location, as you know. In Greek, in fact, I, I was talking about Christianity, but uh, also, in uh, in Greek religion, there is the paradise uh, as a location, which is, for example, the uh, what we say in French Champs Elysees. No? Champs Elysees, it's a uh, kind of paradise, and there is also in um, in uh, in Greek religion, there is also hell as a location. Interesting. 
So uh, let's come back now to this triangle of paradise. And uh, we can say, well, we have the word paradise. We have the, we have the reality of paradise, which is somewhere. It's a location. Uh, and then we have uh, on the left representation of uh, this reality, which uh, is the meaning of the world. By the way, the meaning what uh, when we have a triangle like that, the meaning is both the meaning of a word is both uh, the reality and the representation of reality. So this is a classical triangular theory of meaning. By the way, the the main difference with this triangle theory. Of, triangular of meaning and my theory of pyramid is that in the case of the pyramid, we have a furthermore the notion which is the three things together. And we can also make, uh, we can also have uh, this uh, triangle for uh, connected with religion, uh, for, for example, for the Greek religion. Gods, which are, uh, so uh, the, the Greek religion, is a polytheism, so we have different gods, as everybody knows. No? And uh, you have the, this reality of gods, which are, it's a mix of uh, something which is out of the daily world, but it's mixed with, uh, with the world because uh, there is, in Greek religion, there is a notion of hero, and hero is a mixture of a god with a human being. So it's not so. Uh, the, according to the Greeks, then uh, the gods are not completely outside of uh, Earth, you know, of the world. You know. And then we have the idea of um, we have the idea of those, these gods, which are uh, which are characterized by different features. In particular, the idea of immortality. Now let me uh, also present another triangle, the triangle of fear. Fear is an emotion. And uh, in the case of fear, so we have the word fear. We have the manifestation of fear as emotion. And we have the, we have <coughs> the thinking about fear, definition of, of, of fear. A distressing, a distressing emotion arose by pain, impending danger, evil, penance, and so on. Which can we, we that we can also uh, represent with a painting, a picture, and so on. Of course, when we are uh, when when we are facing this picture, it's a bit strange because on the on the bottom right you have a picture because we cannot put here the reality of fear, no? and uh, so it's a photograph. It's a photograph, but a photo. A photo is supposed to be a, a direct copy of reality, I say, by difference with a painting, which is a representation of reality. But you see that the, I choose these two pictures because they are quite similar, the painting. So sometime, uh, sometimes our representation, our thinking is an image of reality, as we say. It's a kind of replication of reality. That's one aspect of our thinking. So the, this, this has to be uh, understood, this left part, this left bottom part has to be understood. Uh, it's a, it, it has to be understood uh, in the, from the perspective of, of a theory of mind, how, how, how are we thinking and so on, and the relation between image and representation, uh, image, of, image and thinking, I've been working a lot about that. I organized a Congress on Imagination in Rio de Janeiro three years ago about imagination, and there was a lot of uh, talks, and we published this book, which is a book of 1,000 pages on imagination with a lot of, uh, with a lot of uh, papers by people from all over the world. And I have been working uh, at using images to uh, develop uh, philosophical thinking, because I think it's uh, very fruitful to use images. Now let's go to the uh, second part of my talk, which uh, is uh, a way to understand uh, and to reach, if we, if we may say to reach, uh, to understand paradise uh, using the theory of opposition. So 
paradise can be uh, at first uh, can be at first presented as a uh, opposite to hell from the point of view of uh, dichotomy what is a dichotomy so dichotomy uh, it's very famous from the Pythagoras table of opposites that you can see here which uh, this table of opposites had a very important role in the development of uh, Greek philosophy. To, to, to start to systematically think about the world making some opposition. Series of opposition, let's say 10 oppositions. We have also opposition in the Chinese tradition between yin and yang. But here, uh, which, is, which is kind of abstract, uh, it's more abstract that, than this list of opposition. But here also we will have, have some abstract aspect as I was explaining. So here are some typical examples which were provided by the Greek uh, philosophers. And we have, what, we have to, what we have to see is that this dichotomy, the two sides of the dichotomy are positive in which sense? Here we have a, I have an illustration of, a posi of the positive dichotomy of, which is here, of a straight line and a curve. What does it mean? It's a positive dichotomy. We have a positive idea of a straight line that we can represent with uh, an image, and we have a positive idea of a curve line. So we have two positive ideas on both sides of this dichotomy. So this is not the same as this kind of dichotomy that I'm calling negative dichotomy, which is expressed by negation, classical negation in, uh, in logic. Uh, here we have a cat. On the left, we have a cat. And on the, on the right, we have a non-cat. We can... We can uh, think we can uh, make the supposition that classical negation in logic arose from this dichotomy from these positive dichotomies of Pythagoras so so these positive dichotomies were kind of empirical way to, to think about negation and then there was a generalization of this to an abstract concept of negation so using negation in an abstract way, it starts to be possible to think about everything as a dichotomy because you have something like a cat and then you think about non-cats. Yeah, a non-cat. It's something very abstract. Why, why it is very abstract? Because here in this um, end of the name non-cat, you can put many different things as expressed here in this image. You have a smurf, a car, and all these are non-cats. So it's something that you cannot represent by only one image, and that you cannot really uh, represent in a direct way. It's something completely abstract because we are putting together, as written here, heterogeneous things. So it's quite interesting. Now let's come back to paradise. Can we? At first, we can say that. Uh, and that's that's uh, interesting. We can see that uh, paradise and hell. It's a kind of positive dichotomy because we have some I, we have some positive idea, if I may say, <laughs> because uh, someone may, can can say well that hell is something negative. But we have positive uh, way. Uh, we have positive idea of two things. You know. Uh, uh, paradise, uh, we represent paradise by such kind of nice image. And then uh, on the other end, we have hell with a lot of fire and things like that. And this is at the same level because I was explaining it's two location. So it's kind of, it's a kind of two positive uh, dichotomy. So I think the, the hell and paradise were conceived in this in this spirit uh, in the spirit of the table of opposition or, or we can say because it was uh, the idea of hell and paradise was before pythagoras but i think pythagoras it's all these two things that go together i mean this table of opposites positive dichotomy and um, hell and heaven it's the same way of uh, understanding uh, uh, the things but now uh, 
we can say, well, maybe it's not a dichotomy. Let's see, you know, like uh, we have uh, cats and dogs and uh, there are some things which are neither cat nor dogs, like a giraffe. To understand that, let's go to the square of opposition. Well, in the square of opposition, uh, we have three opposition. We have the contradictory opposition, which corresponds to this dichotomy we were talking about. When it's a two proposition cannot be true together and can be false together. And then we have the notion of contrariety, which is in blue. Two things can be false together, but cannot be true together. They are, they are not excluding something else, like cats and dogs. Cat and dog, but there is something else. And then uh, we have a subcontrariety, sub which says that two things there is nothing else and there is nothing else but these two things can have a, uh, an intersection now in the case of uh, let's go to contrariety so here are some several examples of uh, contrarieties theontic contrarieties where when you have obligation prohibition and something which is allowed uh, and this is uh, interesting because uh, to speak about this is also connected with uh, with religion we have uh, on the top right the triangle of music where we have music noise and silence mm -hmm. and then also you have some uh, some uh, trichotomy a trichotomy which are connected to some action for example like in uh, traffic stop go stop if you can you, you have these three uh, lights which correspond of different way to behave in religion also uh, we have some uh, trichotomies trichotomies uh, in both uh, in hinduism religion here as you can see on this famous uh, trichotomy which is at the top and uh, on the bottom you have also a very famous uh, trichotomy from uh, Christianity. Now let's see that also in case of paradise, we, we have uh, in Christianity, we also have a uh, trichotomy. Paradise, hell, and purgatory. But we may investigate uh, to, to which, up to which point uh, purgatory is uh, very essential uh, to think uh, about this paradise or it's only secondary. What we can say, for example, it's not easy to have a representation um, uh, as an image, like we have here, of paradise and hell. What is, what is exactly purgatory? So if we want to, to develop more the understanding of this uh, type, if we want to defend the idea that we have a trichotomy or not a dichotomy, we have to uh, develop the, the notion of purgatory. Uh, go, going back to the pyramid, we have to develop the idea of, of, uh, of we have to develop the notion of purgatory. What is purgatory? What is uh, the representation and the reality of purgatory? Now, uh, again, the square of opposition, when we have at the bottom at the bottom this green line, which is subcontraries, we can also, someone may also want to defend that, um, want to defend that paradise and hell are not uh, a trichotomy, that they are really, that they are only, that uh, purgatory uh, doesn't exist. So we have these two things, but we have these two things, hell and paradise, but that these two things have something in common, and then we will have a subcontrary opposition. There is this famous, uh, there is this famous novel written by, uh, by, by William Blake, The Marriage of Heaven and Hell. So, there, in, in, in this book, this is a kind of mixed of the two notions. So this is also this is also a possibility uh, to think. Uh, of course, in in England, uh, the, in English, they use rather even than paradise, but we can also uh, speak about uh, paradise and hell. We can see if there is not something in common between these two uh, these two notions of even and hell. That's it. We have a few minutes for question, if any. Yes, uh, that's right. So, are, are there any questions concerning the logic of paradise? 
Okay, we'll wait a moment. And what about limbo? <laughs> Should it be included <laughs> somehow? In the triangle? I mean, it's, it's an element of one of them, yeah, but... Perhaps. Yeah, what I, well, uh, Martin, what I can say, I, I start uh, this uh, research uh, only recently, so it's it's uh, it's it's the start. But I think I will. Uh, yeah, but it's it's a very rich uh, topic, <laughs> and uh, with many variation, and um, I will develop all these different aspects. And it's very interesting also because I like since you know as I was saying, I like to use images in in uh, to develop philosophy. And they are, we have a lot of different kind of image about this, uh, these different aspects of uh, yeah. <clears throat> of paradise and hell. And uh, yeah, it it is inspiring and yeah, and very potentially very rich. I, I agree. Yeah. And it's also oh. you. It's also useful to rep, to compare different religions because uh, it's yes, this notion right. appear in, in different places. Where, where you you have this triangle, uh, where, where where there is something else, and so on. We have a question. Uh, yeah, Ben Murphy would like to ask a question. Uh, yeah. Could you? Uh, I be seen. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. Here, here, here. Th thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, good. Thank yep. you very much for uh, a wonderful presentation. I I have my talk that I'm going to be giving here later, and yep. I just wish I had time to rewrite the whole thing and absorb all of these ideas. So I want to see if I've understood positive and negative dichotomy correctly. Yeah. If I say God exists, somebody could say, what you just said is not true. And that would be a, a, a negative dichotomy because yeah. the sole content of what they've said is whatever I said is not true. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas, whereas uh, uh, to establish that we have a positive dichotomy, somebody would have to say something which I would, I, they would have to be able to establish. Um, Somebody says the Buddhist doctrine of Patikul Samuppada is correct. Everything is interdependent. And there I might say that sounds to me like a positive dichotomy, meaning amongst the many, 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 many things that would constitute God does not exist, the doctrine of Patikul Samuppada would be one of them because the content of Patikul Samuppada is no necessary beings, and I think God is a necessary being. So to establish that there's a positive dichotomy, you're saying that something falls within the, the broader space of a negative dichotomy. Am I understanding the distinction? Yeah, sure. Uh, but what I can say, for example, about what would be a positive uh, representation of the, of, of the declaration that God does not exist. If you say just God does not exist like that, it's something which is uh, purely negative. But someone may want to express positively the non-existence of God, for example, by the symbolic, uh, by the typical symbolic representation of that, uh, like uh, an earthquake, you know, uh, like the Lisbon earthquake where uh, so many uh, people died. So uh, the, the people can show this, can uh, just show this picture and say this is. The, this is a positive uh, representation of the fact that there is uh, no God, something like that, you know. So I think it's possible to have uh, some positive representation. It's possible to defend the non-existence of God with some positive representation. And, and, and on the other hand, if someone wants to have a positive if you want to have a positive uh, representation of the existence of God, you also have to uh, have something really positive because someone can say, well, God God exists doesn't mean anything because we don't know what is God and something like that. So, so it's not so easy. It's not only a question of sentence, of, of, of affirmation of some sentences. It's a question of thinking about the, thinking about the object, about the topic in a positive way. So it's not easy. I mean, sometimes God is, is thought only negatively because you see, like in religion where, where you cannot use images, 
it's uh, we are going in this, in this uh, negative relation because people say that we cannot represent uh, God is not uh, limited to some uh, representation by human beings. We cannot represent God. So in this case, uh, that's not easy. Okay, thank you. And we have a question uh, on our YouTube chat. Uh, can you say something more about the location of pa the paradise? Uh, well, that, that's yeah, a very uh, <laughs> that's a very interesting question. I have to investigate more, you know. But it's that's a very interesting uh, that's a very interesting uh, question. I mean, uh, of course. Uh, even in the sky, you know, in English, even mean in the sky, it's up, and we have this representation that uh, uh, that paralysis it's it on the it's on the top, and that uh, that hell is at the bottom. So this is kind of a geometrical representation, uh, if I may say, of the location of these two things, which is interesting. You know, what is at the top, what's at the bottom. There are a lot of things to say about that, and and which is connected with some things related with geometry and so on. So uh, I will develop this topic. And once again, I would like to say that, uh, to conclude, that I am preparing a workshop on this topic for the Congress in Varanasi. So I will uh, make a description and I will launch a call for paper for this workshop on the logic of paradise. And everybody is welcome to submit an abstract. Yeah, and still uh, we have this. I ah, still another question. Uh, you know, <laughs> the problem okay, that okay. paradise is so something uh, like heaven and and if we take the bible literally and historically yeah this is the place that existed and was located geog geographically yeah yeah, yeah so sure this True, is it's another true. interesting topic okay but now we have to <laughs> yeah. move to the next lecture thank you very much 